Um, but just wanted to say thank you so much for, for being here, first of all. Um, and I'm excited to learn more about your business and more about networking. I mean, we can all use tips on networking. I have been in this industry for 15 years. And every time I hear a speaker, I always take points away. So I'm really looking forward to your presentation. And again, thank you so much for being here. Um, so I, I just want to mention to everyone, if you have any questions, so please put them in the chat. I'm going to I'm gonna post a comment when I'm done. Um, I really urge you to ask questions. I think you'll take them maybe at the end, Devin, is that? Yeah, that's, okay. That's probably so if anyone easy. has any questions, just leave them in the session chat. Um, I'm going to do a brief intro and then I'll be back towards the end just to, to say thanks and, and do some concluding mm -hmm. remarks and maybe help you with any questions that there might be. So um, I'm going to get started if that's okay. So Devin Turcotte is the founder of Careerified. I really like the name, by the way. Like, Thank you. Really like it. It's very good. <laughs> GTA-based career practice that focuses on career clarity for Gen Z. She works with high school students and youth who have withdrawn from post-secondary education to help them or sorry, to help them own their career and education journey, as well as with 20 somethings who haven't quite landed in their working lives the way they expected to. And I know that happens a lot, right? Some people study things and they decide it's not for them and they switch gears and then they're lost, right? So yes. um, awesome that someone like you is helping, uh, helping get them on the right track. So Devin's draw to the career development field is rooted in the connection between mental health and youth career decisions. She's a fierce advocate for lifelong learning and believes there's always an alternate route to success. So again, thank you so much for being here. I don't wanna take up your time, but I'll be back <laughs> towards the end. No worries. Thanks, Rachel. Thank Hi, everybody. Um, okay, so we're going to talk networking today. Um, and as Rachel mentioned, you know, what's really funny is a lot of seasoned professionals I know who like they network their tails off because, you know, they they're trying to get funds for stuff or it's part of their is a big part of their job or business development, whatever. And even they will occasionally come up with, wow, this this is really awkward. This conversation, this is really um, this is really not what I was hoping. So if you're not super fantastic with networking, you are in the right session. What I want to do today is share with you some, um, some basic tips, some really simple strategies to help you be better at networking, to feel more confident, um, and to make networking work for you, not just for job search, but in terms of long-term career development as well. Um, so yes, of course, Rachel gave me a lovely introduction, which is very kind of her. Um, yeah, I'm really excited to talk about this topic today. I've worked in career education and career development for almost 15 years now. Um, and my entire career has been working with youth. So that's grade seven, honestly, all the way to newly graduated from college or university. So what we're going to cover today, why networking? Looking at who you know, how to expand your network getting curious um, and bringing curiosity into these conversations, uh, how to be sort of a little bit giving in these conversations and how to how to use that mindset well, and then how to follow up effectively. Um, as Rachel mentioned, feel free to pop questions in the chat. Uh, I will make sure I get to them before the end of our session. And if not, I'm going to have my contact information up at the end. So if you need to shoot me a message and be like, what was that thing you said? Totally fine. All right, let's dive in here. So why networking? Networking has a lot of great advantages to it. First off, hiring is very often based on relationships. Um, an employer is much, much more likely to hire you if you are someone they know than if you're someone they don't know. So as much as you can get to know people, the more you will find employers are ready to talk to you, ready to offer positions, ready to come to you when um, you know something's about to be posted. You also want to think about your own personal growth. What often happens when you leave post-secondary education is you're breaking out of a community that you've been a part of for a number of years. Now, the last little while, of course, has been a bit weirder because everybody's been online. Um, but for a lot of people, right, you might soon be moving out of the place that you've been sharing with roommates for a while, or um, maybe you stayed in residence for some time, or whatever communities you formed around study groups or school all of that is disbanding now. And so it's not uncommon to sort of feel a bit of a sense of loss of, well, how do I keep friendships going? How do I you know, make new friends? How do I do this? Networking can help with that. Networking can provide you with opportunities that aren't just work and aren't just strictly personal, right? You may be approached by someone who uh, is interested in having you present at a conference or partner with them on a project, a community-based project or, uh, or something that's work-related but not tied to your job. So other opportunities can come out of it too. 
And lastly, of course, once you are working in whatever awesome place you're going to work, uh, this can be a really great way to help bring in new business for your organization, even if business development isn't specifically what your role is. Um, and the best thing about that is, you know, that tends to come with little bonuses like promotions and raises and all that good stuff. So what networking has a lot of great positivities to it. Okay, so what you wanna start with is who you know. Uh, one of the things I find that gets people really weirded out about networking is um, they they picture this like big anonymous event that they're going to go into. It's in some ballroom or these days, of course, being online, it's some random, I don't know, a chamber of commerce event or something like that. And they go in and it's like, it's all these strangers and you're thinking, how am I supposed to build any kind of relationship with these people? Don't start with the strangers. Um, Yes, that's going to be part of it is uh, is trying to connect with strangers, but it's a lot easier when you start with people you know. So if you have um, paper and pen handy, uh, tablet, phone, something where you can start making a list, um, I'm going to give you a few ideas. And when I say make a list of who you know, I don't mean individual names, although you can do that. I mean, think of them in terms of groups of people, right? You already have a pretty wide network that um, you may not realize. So people you know from school. That might be professors, it might be classmates, um, it might be people that helped you in terms of like if you access student services at some point, you may be able to connect with um, extended family members, neighbors, um, friends of your parents or guardians or other family members, uh, or even thinking about people like your roommates or a partner, their parents and guardians, their family members, that kind of thing. Um, the whole concept of networking is based on the idea of six degrees of separation. And if you haven't heard that phrase before, it's the, um, it's a theory that everybody in the world is interconnected by six people or less. Okay. So what you're doing with this first list is making the first degree connections. Who do you specifically know? Okay. So once you start doing that, you're going to find you actually know a lot more people than you realize you do. The next thing you want to find out is who do they know? Who would they recommend you talk to based on where you're looking to go next, right? And I don't know if you've ever had this happen to you, but you might have mentioned to somebody, hey, I'm looking for a summer job. And then lo and behold, some random person reaches out to you or contacts you or somebody says that you know says, hey, I heard of this job available over here. You should apply. You'd be really great. This is kind of what we're trying to do here. Um, so that's your first degree connections. Start with who you know. Then you want to start expanding out. When you look at the relationships in your life, what you probably recognize is that everybody you know has something in common with you, right? You took a class together. You lived in the same residence. You auditioned for the same community theater production, you played on the same soccer team, you were part of the same book club, whatever it is. Approach your professional network the same way. It's a lot easier trying to strike up a conversation with somebody when you already have a foundation, you already have a baseline. And so this is where you want to start thinking about where do I have something going on that other people would have the same thing going on? So let me give you a few examples your alumni association. Um, it's the, pretty much the second you've finished your requirements for your program, you become a member of the alumni association for your institution. Uh, and the one thing that you have in common with the tens of thousands of people who are members of the alumni association is that you all attended the same institution. Um, so there's a couple of ways you can look into this. One is literally reach out to the alumni office. There will be one um, that's associated with your college or university and ask them if they have any networking events coming up or if they have any mentorship opportunities. That's become a bigger thing in the last few years. So give that a shot. Because again, your basis is we went to the same place. And especially if it's somebody who graduated a while ago and they haven't been at that uh, on campus in a while, they might ask stuff like, oh, is this place still the cool hangout? Or do students still do this on Thursdays? Or whatever the, the kind of trend was when they were there, that's a bonding moment for you. The other route to look is if you go on LinkedIn, and I highly recommend that you have a LinkedIn profile. If you go on LinkedIn and you look up your institution, you can actually search through alumni. Um, so you'll 
search out, let's say you went to Ryerson, you're going to search Ryerson University, you go to the Ryerson University page, and there's going to be a little button that says alumni, you can go check out other alumni. And that's a great way to start a conversation too. Professional associations. Some of you may have joined a professional association as a student, which is always a great idea if you have the option. Um, generally, students and new graduates get a cut on fees for joining these kinds of places. So uh, I remember for me, I joined, it was the Canadian Public Relations Society when I was studying communications. Um, I think an annual membership at the time was $400, but as a student, I paid 50. So that was a huge bonus. And I was treated like a full member. I could go to events. I could apply for jobs. I could, you know, reach out to other members. They had a whole member directory. That's a great way to connect with people too. Again, what you have in common, you're both members of the same association and you're interested in working in the same field and or work in the same field. Meetup groups. Um, and I'm specifically talking about like the website and the app, Meetup. Think about your hobbies. What do you like to do when you're not, you know, doing school stuff or work stuff or whatever, right? Maybe you're a knitter, maybe you're athletic, maybe you're a trail runner, maybe you like yoga, maybe you're a reader, maybe you're artistic, whatever the situation is. If you go on a site like Meetup, you can join groups with other people who are nerdy about the same stuff that you're nerdy about. And so where initially the conversation will be about how you are, um, you know, this thing you have in common, how you're both into whatever it is. And then once you've kind of formed that relationship, then you turn the conversation to work and careers and that kind of stuff. So build the foundation based on, you know, what you're already interested in. Plus, you know, you'll meet new friends who like the same things you do, which is always good. Community organizations. This might come, I use that as an umbrella term. This might come as a lot of different things. Um, it may actually be like places you have or could volunteer. Um, it might be places like, uh, like churches uh, or other types of religious communities. It might be any kind of online communities that you're a member of for whatever reason. Um, so that's another route to look at as well. Again, you have that community, that interest, that value system already in common. And is there anything else you can think of? So again, if you have your thing to take notes, jot down a couple of things. What's something that you're into, whatever that means to you, and where can you find other people who are into it too? All right, hopefully everybody's okay so far. No questions so far, but that's okay. I'm not being, uh, hope I'm not being too cryptic here. It's pretty good. Um, the trick here is as the pandemic ends, you're going to want to look offline as well as online. Uh, right now, of course, everything is online. We're doing this right here. Um, but once it's, you know, once we're kind of a little bit more back to pre-COVID times, um, keep looking for offline opportunities to meet new people and connect as well. Curiosity is your friend. Um, I think for a lot of people, they get very, very nervous about even the thought of networking because what they feel challenged by is this idea of sounding smart. They think, oh my gosh, what am I going to say? I want to make a good first impression and I don't want to sound like a bumbling idiot. So um, the way to combat this is go at it from a mindset of curiosity. Okay. Don't focus so much on trying to say the smart thing, trying to sound, uh, you know, incredibly schooled and intelligent. What we often see, um, and it's very, very funny, is that if you demonstrate you're interested in other people, they will think you're an interesting person. Okay. If you're a good listener, people will think you're a great conversationalist. It's a fantastic thing. So when you do meet somebody in one of these forums, one of these spheres that you've identified, ask questions. Two or three, you don't have to be the Riddler, but ask a few questions and then engage in their answers. Listen attentively. And if you listen more than you talk, honestly, people will think you're amazing at conversation um, because that's where you're going to be insightful, right? It's a less is more approach. What kinds of questions can you ask? Probably any number of things. I mean, I can certainly come up with questions for days. Not everybody's jam, and that's okay. Um, but start with the basics. How did you get started? What got you interested in this work? What do you like most about what you do for a living? What would you change about it if you could? Um, how has the pandemic changed how you work? How your industry operates? What's going on with your organization? What do you think um, is going to stay? 
There's a lot of conversation about that right now. And it is going to be very organization, industry, and geography specific as to what we keep doing because of, that we started in the pandemic and, and what we don't do afterwards. So that stuff that is not only demonstrates that you have a lot of interest, it also tells the other person like, hey, you're, you're really thinking about these things. Um, what are some other things you would want to know? When I ask this question, my clients and I say, like, what, what would you want to know about it? People come up with a wide range of things. And certainly if you think of anything, feel free to throw it in the chat. Other people might find it helpful to, uh, to know what you know, too. One of my favorite questions, um, particularly if you're having sort of an information interview or a coffee chat with somebody, and I didn't put on the slide, but one of my favorites is um, what is something you do regularly at work? that people would never think is a part of your job. You get some really interesting answers to that one. So feel free to screenshot this one. I'll give you a second just in case you haven't. And then we will move on. Give a little bit. I got the song in my head. Give a little bit. Okay. Uh, you didn't come here and hear me sing. So this comes in two different versions. One is right in the moment, can you offer something? So if you're talking with this person and maybe you've recently heard a podcast episode or you read a book or article or something along those lines, offer it up. Hey, actually, I heard a really interesting conversation about this on a podcast I was listening to the other day. Let me look that up for you. This was the episode. This is the name of the podcast. Um, and feel free to let them know, email it to them, whatever. Um, the other thing you want to, uh, be aware of, you know, they may mention, oh, hey, we're looking for so-and-so right now. And so-and-so might be a role they have to fill. Maybe they're looking for somebody to put new shingles on their house, whatever it is they bring up. If you know somebody who does that thing, again, throw that out there. Hey, I know somebody about that. You know, could I give them your name or do you want their contact information? Um, something that demonstrates that you're wanting to be helpful. People like when people are givers because it stops the awkwardness of having to ask. <laughs> so if there's something you can offer to add to the conversation, amazing. If you can't, don't stress, but go into it thinking, I want to be able to give something. The other thing you want to be able to offer in any kind of networking scenario is a brief pitch about who you are. And we call this an elevator pitch, um, which if you're not familiar with the term, an elevator pitch is about a 30 second summary, which really isn't very much time. And it covers basically what you do or what skills you have or how you help other people or organizations. So basically like what's, what's the thing that you're about? What do you do and why? If you know, it can be really, really helpful to, to throw in where you see yourself going in the future or where you would love to be a little bit later on. Um, or if you know what opportunity are you seeking right now. So if there's a specific job or a specific job title you're going after, this is something you probably want to include. Um, so to give you an example, this is actually one of many elevator pitches I've taken into various events. My name is Devin, and I am a career development professional working with Gen Z and younger millennials to help them build meaningful careers. I've worked in career education and coaching for a long time. And after years of witnessing the negative mental health impacts of poor career decision-making, it was important to me to do something about it. And that was the basis for me to start my own career practice. Takes me about 19 seconds to say that. Okay. So if I wanted to then throw on a, the next opportunity I'm seeking is my ideal client is my, whatever I wanted to do, I could do that. But let's talk about you for a sec. Obviously you're going to introduce yourself with your name. Um, and you can easily go with, I recently graduated with a BA in geography from the University of Guelph. Uh, I particularly enjoyed studying or I did particularly well with because. Um, so that might be, I really, really enjoyed studying in my undergrad about uh, commuter issues in the GTA. I thought it was a really cut and dried to be able to create transportation that would minimize impacts on the environment. But it turns out it's really complex and it was really cool to find that out. Simple. And then again, if you know what you want to add, you can add. I'm interested in bringing my skills and education to whatever industry, whatever organization, if you know that. Um, and right now I'm learning how to be an asset and how to bring the best to that. Uh, further down the road, I'd love to do more, more work that involves 
whatever it is you want to do, climate change, um, uh, better transportation systems, I don't know, whatever it is you're into. So right now I'm doing everything I can to learn more about how I can be an asset to that field. Or a really simple, especially if it is a networking event, I came to this event today because I wanted to learn more about this, that, or the other thing. Um, so again, feel free to screenshot this um, if that's a faster way for you to get back to it later. Um, but yeah, really simple. You don't have to get into too much. What I find happens uh, with me when I say this, inevitably people are like, wow, there's a lot going on there. What's interesting about it? Tell me more. That's really fascinating. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, the, a good elevator pitch is going to encourage people to ask questions. But as the person who's going in, you want to be mindful of that too. When somebody gives you their pitch, their elevator pitch, right? Tell me more about that. Wow, that's really interesting. So that's a simple way to handle some of those questions as well. Any questions so far? We're rolling through, which is great. Um, so I know you guys have a jam-packed afternoon. I'll just give it a sec just in case. Thank you. I'm so glad. Okay. So yeah, and pop them in there if you have them. Okay. Following up. This is where the wheels come off a little bit when people are networking. Because um, you may meet somebody at an event or maybe you had a, a coffee chat with them. Um, but if you don't continue the momentum, it's just going to fall right off. So when you're in these conversations, I actually had somebody ask me this on Instagram yesterday. Um, how do you follow up with somebody without being creepy? No problem. First off, if you're on a site like LinkedIn, LinkedIn is designed to be networking. Um, so that's why people are there. Uh, nobody's hopefully going to say, you're creepy, stop messaging me, just for saying, hi, could I ask you a few questions? Um, so that's why they're there. Networking is the name of the game. Same as if you're at an event. People are there to network. That's the point. Um, so all you have to do is say something simple like, I've really enjoyed our conversation today, or it was really nice to meet you, or it's been great chatting with you. Would it be okay to get your contact info and set up a time to chat more later, right? So if it's an event, maybe later today you try this um, and you're doing this like conversation with somebody, it's, hey, would it be okay to get your info? at one time and maybe someday in the future we will hand out business cards once again of course now with you know everything's on zoom and teams and google meet and whatever else uh what you're probably going to get is their email uh, a social handle they may say find me on linkedin you can uh, you can look me up there and contact me through that they may drop their whatsapp whatever um into a chat box and then great you have their contact info so now you want to make sure you are timely on this so reach out within one business day. So if it is, you know, this thing happens on a Friday, yes, you can contact them on Monday. They don't need to, uh, they don't need to hear from you on Saturday morning, but you do want to be mindful of the other person's time. So when you follow up and you ask for that other meeting, it may be something along the lines of, hey, do Just do what feels natural, right? At this point, if you have established a rapport with this person, you're going to figure out what makes sense to keep that relationship going. Um, you may find after a couple conversations, you're like, you know what? I really got everything I needed out of this. I don't really have a reason to, uh, to keep talking to this person regularly. And that's okay too. The basis of a good network, of a great network really, is to have, um, to have authenticity for it to be a genuine connection, right? That's the goal of connecting with people with whom you already have something in common because, right, it makes it easier, but it's also, it's going to be a more genuine connection. It's not gonna have that forced fake feeling to it that people worry about when they talk about that. So yeah, after that initial meeting, and when you prepare for that meeting, make sure you have some questions ready again and uh, you know what you wanna know out of, that, uh, out of that conversation. But after that, you're gonna go, hey, that's really great. Maybe this person turns into like a mentor for you, which would be wonderful. And maybe that just is what it is. And that's, you know, you email them once every two years to say, hey, how are things? This is what I'm up to. Good to see ya. Whatever. Okay. So you're just going to do what's natural after that. 
Okay, so we covered a lot of ground in about 25 minutes, <laughs> which is amazing. Um, hopefully it gave you some good tips that you can use. Um, so start with who you know. Don't get too fancy. Don't start with strangers, especially if you're introverted or you have like you have social anxiety or this makes you feel really clenched up and scared. Start with who you know and just say, I'm trying to do this. Is there anybody you can think of that I should talk to? And the more people you ask, the more people will think of people you can talk to. Then expand from there. Start with, you know, what you're interested in and build out. Uh, bring that attitude of curiosity and helpfulness. Have your elevator pitch ready to go and then follow up. With your elevator pitch, I should mention, write it out and then memorize it. Practice it. It should be able to just roll off your tongue so that in the moment you're not going, oh, what's that thing I wanted to say? No, you want it to just roll right out and be good to go. So I'm happy to take questions if you have them in the chat. Um, and here's my contact information. So if you think of something after, um, feel free to, uh, to shoot me a message or connect with me here. Um, oh, I'm so glad. Good. Okay. How do we network with recruiters as job seekers? Um, okay. How do we network with recruiters? Same thing you would do. Um, I would say be transparent. Um, recruiters are always, they very often get sort of like sneaky emails, which they know what they look like. It's not really sneaky. <laughs> so you can reach out to a recruiter and say, hey, I've been interested in working for this organization for quite some time. You know, would I be able to chat with you about expectations? Where is the best place to look for uh, job postings from your organization? Uh, or maybe even letting them um, tell you, like, what kind of skills do they look for uh, in all of their employees, right? Learning about transferable skills, because obviously there's going to be different things in hard skills. But I would say with recruiters, just be upfront. Um, a lot of them are really, really busy. They don't really want to be dancing around and jumping around and they know what you're fishing for anyway. So just be polite, respectful, and upfront about why you're reaching out. When reaching out to people on LinkedIn, is it better to reach out to people who work at the firm or the firm's recruiter? Um, I would say it partly depends on what your goal is. Generally, I would say um, probably the person doing the work that you would like to do is a great place to start um, because the recruiter may be the person who does sort of the first pass on the resumes, but ultimately it'll be the team, the department, the hiring manager for that department who will make the end decision. Uh, plus you're going to get insider info on what that team is about, what kind of work they do. That stuff's going to be really, really important um, for you to shape your resume and your cover letter going forward. So I would start with them. Um, it doesn't hurt to be friends with some recruiters, but I would start with the people who actually do the work that you would want to do because they will likely have ultimately the final decision as to whether or not you get hired. Are there any other questions? Those are both really good ones. Recruiters is definitely, uh, that's a whole other thing. Any other questions? I'm sure Rachel's going to pop back in here in a second. I'm so glad you could all come. That's fantastic. Um, feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn, follow on Instagram, um, shoot me an email if you have other questions or there's something you uh, think of. But uh, hopefully you guys will get to start practicing some of this today. Hi, Rachel. Hi, thanks so much. You're perfect timing too, even answering some questions. That was, that was really <laughs> good. Thank you so much. Networking is such an important part of, mm -hmm. of any job search. I mean, they say, What's the stat now? 80% or some, maybe it's a little higher now of jobs are found through the hidden job market, which is networking mm -hmm. ultimately. So mm -hmm. um, you gave such amazing points. And, and you know, like your like to your point, recruiters do get inundated with, with resumes. So you have to have that helpfulness. Why, you know, how can you help me reach out, you know, that mm -hmm. elevator pitch practice? Because if it's not impressive, you know, it might get overlooked because they do get inundated with with yeah. messages. So, mm -hmm. um, but if you are truly a candidate for the role, you know, they're going to want to hear from you. So it's just the way you word it. And like you said, practice, practice, practice that elevator pitch. So, um, well, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate you being on the platform and taking the time. I know it takes a lot of time to prepare a presentation. So we really, really appreciate that. Um, did you put your contact information? I don't think you put it in the chat. Do you want to put it in the, in the chat? chat? Just so yeah. can easily click on your, your website or LinkedIn profile or whatever you feel comfortable sharing. Um, that would be great. I can do that. Oh, of course, see, you're watching me type, so I can't type. <laughs> right? People are looking um, at you when you're typing, you can't do it. <laughs> so in terms of, of careerified, so you do resumes, you do career advice, help. Yeah. What's, what's kind of the basis of your business? 
Um, it's a little bit of everything. So as you mentioned in my intro, a lot of it I find is career clarity and trying to figure out what exactly you're trying to go after. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's a big piece of it. Um, but yeah, absolutely. The, the stuff like getting your resume in order in your cover letter and getting ready for your job interviews and figuring out a specific job search strategy. Um, I provide all of those supports too. Well, too. that's amazing. So check check out Devin online. Thank you again so much for being here. Our next session uh, is starting now. We have two sessions actually. Uh, one with TD, uh, the Human Resource Coordinator for TD Bank. Career Development and Planning is the topic, and we have uh, a career confidence coach who's going to talk about owning your career story for interview success. So thank you so much for being here. I will see everyone at the next sessions and uh, hopefully in the networking area as well. So thanks again, Devin. Thanks, Rachel.